Hello friends, welcome to Code Semantic and welcome to the new video tutorial of edio.net. This video tutorial covers all the information related to edio.net along with the examples. So let us see what is edio.net first. Okay. So what is edio.net? It is an object model which is used to establish the connection between your application and data sources. Now what is an application? See application can be any application that is developed using .NET. It can be a window application, it can be a website, it can be a web service, it can be a console application. And what is data source? Data source is any source which can store your data permanently. Here edio.net will allow you to establish a connection with a database and as well as with XML file. So here our data sources can be a database or can be a XML file. See, data sources can be XML or database. Now, what ADO.NET contains? It actually contains a set of classes which are used to connect, to retrieve and manipulate data. Right? So basically, ADO.NET is used to connect with a database to retrieve all the information from the database and as well as to manipulate your data using .NET application. Now, let us see what are the main components of a ADO.NET. So, two main components of a ADO.NET are data provider and data set. Now, let us see what is data provider and data set. See. These two are the fundamental components of ADO.NET. Now, what data set represent? A data set represent disconnected architecture. Okay. Or you can say it is disconnected from the data source. Means, once you collect a data from your database and store it in a data set, okay, it does not need to know where the data it holds came from. Okay, once the data set get populated, you need not to keep a connected with database. Okay, if your connection is lost or if you connect, if your connection is closed, then on, then also your data will be available in data set because data set is in memory representation of your data. All your data along with your constraint, along with your table design get stored in memory okay and this actually data set comes under a disconnected architecture now let us see what is dot net data providers okay so data providers allows you to connect with data source and to execute the sql command against it means dot net data providers or data providers comes under connected architecture and data set comes under disconnected architecture okay now definitely we are going to study this part in detail using example for time being just uh, just try to understand this concept and these terms okay now let us see what are the dot net data providers okay so basically uh, ADO.NET allows you to connect with various type of databases. Okay, one of the database is SQL Server. So there is a .NET provider for SQL Server also. Okay, SQL Server is one database like Access or Oracle or MySQL. Now it will also allows you to connect with OLEDB data sources. Now, for example, OLEDB data sources are like Access. Okay, or older versions of SQL Server or Oracle can come under OLEDB data sources. Now, there are some ODBC compliant data sources also that are quite old. Okay, nowadays OLEDB and SQL Server data, data, source, data providers are used. Now, for each provider, okay, there is a separate namespace. And that namespace is within system.data. So you can say the system.data is the main namespace. And it again consists a separate namespace for SQL Server, a separate namespace for OLEDB, and separate namespace for ODBC. Now let us see what are that namespaces. 
for SQL Server, the namespace is system.data.sql client. And for OLADB, the namespace is system.data.oladb. Now, in this video series, I'll cover two data providers that is SQL Server and OLADB. So, all the explanation or all the examples are regarding these two data providers. Okay. Now, remember this thing before we start using any class, any particular class, okay, uh, in .NET, we have to import the namespace for the same, okay. So, whenever we are using the classes of system.data namespace, we have to import the system.data or you, you have to use that namespace using system.data. If you are using vb.net, you will say import system.data. If you are using SQL Server, you have to use this namespace or you have to import this namespace. If you are using OLADB data provider, import this namespace or use this namespace. Now, let us see the major components of a data provider. Now, these data providers that we studied, SQL Server Data Provider, OLDB Data Provider, these two are what? Data Provider. Now, this data provider has main four main components. Let us see what is the first component. First component is a connection. Okay? And connection is a class basically. Why it is used? It is used to connect to the data source. Now, you can say data source can be a database. So, instead of data, data source, I, I can say database also. So, if you want to connect to database, we have to use connection component. Okay. Now, second is command. Okay. It is used to execute a command or you can say it is used to execute the queries against your data source or against your database and to and retrieve it using data reader or data set and to execute and insert update or delete command. So, whenever you want to execute any command like insert, update, delete or select. Okay. You will use command. Okay. Now, the next is data reader. You can say it is read only, forward only result set, connected result set. It is used to store the result of select query. But whenever you are reading um, the data from the data reader, you should be always connected and you can read it from one direction only in one direction only okay and you can only read you cannot alter so remember these two terms it is forward only read only result set or it is also called as forward only read only cursor now the last main component is data adapter data adapter is actually uh, act as a interface between your data source and your data set so data adapter fetches the data from the database and stored it in the data set and whenever you make any changes in the data data set you have to update that changes back to the database so for that also data adapter is used so as i wrote here it is used to populate the data set with the data from the data source and to update the data source here you can take a meaning of data source as a database okay now let us see the architecture of a ADO.NET. This is again frequently asked question. What is the architecture of ADO.NET? See, it includes all the classes or components that I told you, explained you. Okay. This is your physical database. Okay. This rectangle, this inner rectangle will contains all the data provider classes that is connection, command, data reader and data adapter then command uh, sorry then command class can have parameters and connection can have transactions okay we are going to see this part in detail what is transaction what is parameter also now data adapter is built of built up of select command insert command update command and delete command and as i told you data adapter fetches the data or populate the data set Okay, so whatever is populated by data adapter from database gets stored in data set. So, this is an architecture of ADO.me. I hope you understand this and in next video, we are going to study the connection object in detail and practically. Thank you.